hi guys welcome back to my channel welcome back to another diy project welcome back to the african prince channel if you are new here welcome and for those that are coming back welcome back so today's project is going to be my first attempt at making a round purse and i'm going to be doing this using like common materials that you can find anywhere So to start off, like I said, I'm going to be using some cardboard and then I'm using this round plate thing. You can use a dinner plate or anything with a round shape that you can find with the size that you want. Then I cut, I drew three circles using that template. And then I just cut them all out. So there are all my three cardboard circles and then I marked two inches from the circumference and then I'll just draw a line which I went ahead and cut off. Because the bag is not going to be like a full circle. So there are all my round cardboard pieces. So that is the shape that I have in the end. Then I'll now take this two and a half inches wide strip of cardboard and then I put it on my circular cardboard like that and then I mark and then I just go ahead and I cut it out. So this is going to be sort of like the base of our clutch bag. And then for the top part I also marked about two and a half inches and then the length I make it the length of the top part of the circular cardboard there and then I just went ahead and then I just cut it out so this is sort of like the arrangement that we are going to need so I'm now taking some tape this is like large tape then I just go ahead and then I cover the whole cardboard with some tape this is just to give it a little bit of moisture proofness I'm not saying go and soak it in water I'm just saying it just gives it a little bit of moisture proof and I believe it makes it a little bit strong so you can make it like two coats of this tape so there are all my pieces all covered in the tape then I arrange them like that and then I just join them together using some tape and you notice that I leave a little bit of space of about five millimeters in between so that when I fold it it makes it easy for me to fold So after that I now take out my interfacing and then I use that template to draw around the interfacing and then I cut it out and I also do it for the smaller circular round, round cardboard. So there are all my interfacing pieces. So I have interfacing for all the cardboard pieces and I double them. So the interfacing is basically what I use to cut the fabric. I don't really mark or draw the fabric. I just iron on some interfacing. This is my lining fabric and then I cut round and I leave some space there. that you can see about an inch. I don't cut it to the exact same size of the interfacing. I leave an allowance of about one inch. Then I also do the same thing for the African print fabric. That is also the same way that I cut the African print fabric. So 
so now there I was putting some glue onto the back of the cardboard piece and then I put it on my interfacing and then I snipped those um, ends And then I just went ahead and then I started gluing the lining fabric onto the back of the cardboard like that. So that is what I have in the end. Then I also do the same thing for the smaller circular cardboard. Then I also do the same thing for the long rectangular strip. So now I'm joining that long rectangular strip onto the main part of the clutch bag. And then I just hot glue it like that. Then I also attach the smaller piece. And at that point you can see now we have the shape of the clutch bag that we want. So as for the African print fabric, after cutting it using the interfacing, I now go ahead and start folding in all the edges of the fabric, following the shape of the interfacing and just ironing it down. Also do the same thing for the smaller African print fabric. Then after that now, I now take my E6000 glue again and then I just spread it around the cardboard of the bag. Then I now take my African print pieces and I start putting them onto the clutch bag. Um, in the middle, I use E6000 glue. Then on the edges, that's when I use the hot glue because the hot glue dries really, really fast. And then I also covered the entire bag using the largest piece of the African print fabric. Then I just go ahead and hold glue it as close to the edges as possible.
so the last part that I will ins that I will glue on is the rectangular strip of fabric then I just go ahead and glue it as you can see in the video So after gluing, I now take my needle and thread. You can use a curved needle for this. I later changed on it and started using a curved needle. Then you do a ladder stitch on all the places like where you glue down, where you have sort of like joining of the African print fabric. They meet at a certain point and form sort of like a seam. And then you do a ladder stitch on all those seams. And you also strengthen the corners. And after that, you know, I now took my marking pen, then I marked the point where I was going to put the magnetic snip fasteners. So I just cut out uh, where I'm going to insert the magnetic snip fastener and then I just push it inside and try to bend it and manipulate it until it's strong. So after putting on the magnetic fasteners, now I started putting these rhinestones and I was basically following sort of the design of the African print fabric itself. So these are iron-on, these are iron-on uh, rhinestones and I was just, so you basically just put them, then you put a hot iron on top and I let it sit for about 30 seconds. And then I remove it. So when you remove it, I let it cool. Then I also added a bridge to cover that um, magnetic fastener. I'm going to leave a link of where you can purchase these rhinestones. So that is the result. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed this project and I liked the results that I ended up with. So this is something that you can make for yourself at home or as a gift for somebody. I'm also going to, so I'm going to be doing more of this kind of projects and I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye.